Model Making Guru is sponsored by eModels.co.uk, your one-stop shop for all your model making needs. eModels.co.uk, make something awesome. Hey everyone, it's Fox from Model Making Guru here. Hello, hello, welcome, welcome to the second instalment in our little build and paint series of the miniatures, or some of the miniatures from Fallout Wasteland Warfare from my new good friends at Medifius Entertainment. If you remember, they sent me some of these figures to preview. The game's not out till May, I did check. Uh, so we're gonna get some of these painted up and we're gonna start with this chap, the mutant, the dual wielding super mutant. Uh, now I'm doing a couple of, uh, well, I'm doing something different today. I've got the microphone up on the actual camera mount instead of on my lapel because I've noticed when I'm doing these close-up shots on my workbench I get quite bassy and boomy I don't know why it's because I'm right next to the bench so it kind of picks up the echo so I'm trying with the microphone not on me which also means for once I won't walk away from the bench and ping the microphone off my collar which I do all the time yeah it's a pain in the bum anyway enough so we've got everybody glued together if you saw in the last episode I've got them all primed now I use the uh, Citadel rattle can of chaos black spray uh, it's not 100% perfect, but it'll do. It was a bit cold outside, so I kind of did it quickly. And it was looking like it was going to rain, so I had to work quickly. So there's a, a few patchy bits, but I don't mind. It's just a primer coat to give the paint something to grip to. Uh, now, if you recall, I've said in many of my videos before, whenever you're painting anything, always, always, always prime your models first. So any kind of primer will do, brushed on, airbrushed, rattle can, it doesn't matter. Just get it primed. It gives the paint something to grip to. By itself, the paint won't just really very grip to the resin very well, or plastic for that fact. So he has been primed. So what are we going to do? Well. I've been trying to figure out the best way to paint him and I'm gonna make it up because I haven't really figured it out so we're gonna start with the skin get all the skin color painted first at least the base colors then we'll paint all the details around him all the bits of armor and clothing and the weapons and stuff then we'll do some shades and then we'll bring out all the highlights and things like that so we're going to make a start first with the skin we're gonna start from the inside out so we are going to start with death world forest yes that's gonna be our basic base coat for the green now you could just use if you've got the citadel paint app there's lots of different types of green in there but they're all kind of tailored most of them towards orcs warhammer orcs warhammer orcs are like a kind of bright green color super mutants are kind of pallid yellowy green faded green color they're not bright green so i don't want to go super bright green so i've got some some greens lined up that i'm going to try and use there's no guarantee it'll work it might come out looking terrible but we're going to start with death will forest so before we get going i'm also going to show you one other thing if i can open it up and that is my wet palette la 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 i'm going to be using a wet palette now if you're using any kind of water-based acrylic paints i strongly recommend uh, you make yourself you can buy them but it's not worth 20 quid you can make your own for a few quid make yourself a wet palette uh, i have done a video about wet palettes so i'll put the link up here there you go um, so check that out well if it can get the YouTube thing to work because it doesn't always do it at the right time so it should be up there somewhere it'll pop up uh, but it shows you how to make a wet palette and all a wet palette is is a thin tray or dish of some sort in this case it's the lid off a sandwich tub because it's not too deep compared to the actual sandwich tub uh, I've got some tissue paper normal household kitchen roll in the lid and on top of that I've got some parchment paper now you have to use parchment paper because it's semi porous it lets water through but not too much uh, don't use grease proof paper because that's kind of waterproof that's why it's grease proof paper uh, it needs to be parchment paper and you will have to hunt around on the amazons to find some it's not easy if you're in the uk if you're in the us you can just go to any shop that sells anything and they'll probably have some but it's cooking household cooking parchment paper that's what you're looking for that's been soaked in water water's been drained off and now the tissue holds the moisture and the parchment paper lets a little bit of the moisture through and when i put my dots of paint on here they'll stay moist for long the problem with water-based acrylics is they dry out really fast if you use just a dry palette like a, a palette pad or a piece of tile or glass or plastic they will dry out really fast and you'll use a lot more paint with a wet palette you can use a lot less paint it'll stay workable for longer you can mix colors together if you make a special mix of colors you can when you're finished at the end of the day you can put this in the fridge put the top back on put it in the fridge bring it out the next day and that paint is still workable so i do recommend you make a wet palette so anyway, I'll get everything ready. I'll get the paint on the palette and we shall get on with the painting. Ooh, back in a moment. 
Okay, so let's get cracking. So I've got the Death Will Forest on the wet palette. Don't need much. I'm going to add a tiny, tiny amount of water to it just to get it going because I don't want it to be straight from the pot and too thick. That's probably too much water, but I'll mix it around a bit. Okay. And all we're going to do is basically brush this on straight over the whole model. So we're just going to go around and get it on there. Don't need to be neat at this stage. We're just getting coverage, basically covering everything. It'll also help me to see which bits are skin and which bits are not skin once I've got the paint on there. Now at first it may look a little patchy but that's absolutely fine. You just need to do more than one coat. I would say more than one but less than three. I can't quote Duncan. I'm not the camera. I can't quote Duncan. That's not the done thing. I can't do that. So this will look a bit rubbish at first but just take your time. Get more than one coat on there and eventually you should have a lovely green model. Okay, so that's the green painted on. Took two coats just to get a nice solid coverage. It's looking pretty good. Uh, by the way, apologies if you hear banging, scraping and sanding noises. The neighbours are doing DIY again. So you might get those noises. Right, what's next? Well, the next colour we're going to use is Fenrisian Grey. Yes. And now this is going to be for the rags. And as before, I've got a little bit on my wet palette. I'm just going to get a little tiny bit of water just to make it a bit more flowy. Get some of it off on the tissue because that's too much. And what we'll do is put that brush there because it's rolling everywhere. Get some of that and we're just going to paint over the rags as neatly as we can because we don't want to go over the the skin parts. Again, because this is thinned down a little bit and it's on the wet palette, it may be a little bit pale and patchy. But no biggie, just do two thin coats. Oh, I nearly said it. Oh, nearly said it. Just do more than one coat, but less than three. Or three if you need to. But just going to cover all these rags. That's not a rag, that's a bit of armour plate. Again, you don't need to be neat when you're going towards the armour plates. It doesn't really matter because we're going to paint those separately. Get the feet done. Oops. And I'll try and stop knocking the camera, but the camera's in just the wrong place. Okay, that's all the greys done. There's only the rags around the, the waist and the bits around the feet. So that's those done. Again, it was a couple of coats. Next up, we need to do a base colour for the armours. And for that, we're going to use my favourite lead belcher. Yes. So I've got some on the wet palette, as always. And it's just a case of getting this on. So we're going to go around and add paint to all the armour pieces. Try and be reasonably careful here. Don't get it on the the bits of rags and stuff than skin that you've already painted, so just take your time. Oops, a bit more. Okay, so that's the armour painted. You can see that's come out nice and shiny. Now, it's not going to stay that way. We're going to do a lot of work on the armour. I also painted the, the guns, but I did them all in the lead belcher. But obviously, they're not all metallic. It's just I might as well paint the whole thing. Uh, it also helps me to see the bits that are going to be wood and other materials a bit easier. There's also a little strap on the on the leg guard there. Uh, the next step is we need to do the leather. So for the leather we have, I'm, I'm going to do this bit down here as leather. Uh, the belt, the pouches and the flying cap. Uh, and for this, the colour we're going to use is dryad bark. Uh, if, but we're not going to use that for the wood, although the wood's going to be brown, the wood's going to be a lighter colour. So we're just going to use it for the leather. So the belts, that strap and the flying cap. So I've got some on the wet palette. I'll get a little bit of water on the brush of brushes. And we'll just paint all these bits. Now this is a base colour, so you might not need two coats. But if you do, just do two coats. Simple as that. Okay, so that's the brown details painted. Uh, there's still more to do on the flight cap, but for the moment we'll just leave it as the brown. Uh, next base colour we need to put on is something for the wood in the uh, pipe pistol. Are these pipe rifles or pipe pistols? The pipe rifles, I think. I, I can't quite tell. Anyway, need to do the wood on there. And for that, we're going to use 
Talon Sand. Just so it's a different brown colour than the leather, because otherwise it'll just all monge together into one single colour. And nothing too complicated here, just a lot of fine brushwork. So I've got some on my work palette, get a little bit of water, take a little bit off, because that's too much. All I'm going to do is paint these wood details. Now there are some metal details that go over the wood. Uh, now when I paint this, I'll probably paint over those by accident, but it's no problem. I'll just go back over with the uh, lead belcher again. Let's get run out of paint. Hang on. I didn't have any paint on my brush. So we're just going to paint these wooden details as carefully as possible. Okay, so that's the base colours down on the guns. I also went ahead and did a little bit of uh, Mechanicus Standard Grey on the tape that's on the butt of the guns. Now in reality these guns don't have wooden stocks, they have like metal tubes, but I guess they couldn't model that. So I've painted them as wood and I've put the little bits of grey on the tape on those stocks. Just a little detail, you won't really see it once it's all weathered, but it's there and I know it's there. I've also gone ahead and put some paint on the goggles for the flight helmet uh, and that was just more lead belcher that's just been painted on just for now it's gonna get weathered over but it's just there in advance of what we need to do later on it's just so I can see them and I can see where they are now next step is something a little unusual we want to suggest if you look at the actual models in the game all the armor is kind of bits of metal they found it's stuff that's lying around so there's old paint and stuff on it so what we're gonna do is just suggest old paint on the on the armor on the metal uh, now we could have done this in a number of different ways we want to kind of simulate paint chipping and old worn away paint but this model is too small to do any kind of real proper chipping fluid type method so what we're going to do we're going to take some if i can find it fenrisian gray and we're going to paint some paint onto the metallic parts just like this in patches now it's going to look really weird to start with because you're thinking well why would there be a blob of paint that's not how paint chipping works but all will be revealed so just go ahead and paint on some paint focusing really in the middle of areas because it's where there's least wear and tear so I'll just get a bit more paint on the brush I'm just gonna go around and paint some splotch marks random shapes and a big bit with a little bit on it and little dots all the way around just little touches here and there nothing too obvious now we're going to make it very subtle so it's not going to be too stand outy but you're probably thinking what are you doing all will be revealed okay so the camera's back down here again so that paint's dried and you can see it's just patchy blueness all over looks a bit weird but this is what we're going to do. See on that bit there, I'm quite pleased with that bit. Didn't put any on this bit on the belt because I've just left that as it is for the reasons. Uh, so this is what we're going to do. We're going to take ourselves some Necron Compound, which is a dry brush paint, which means it's just 99% pigment and not much else. It's not runny, it doesn't move. We've got ourselves a piece of tissue. We have ourselves a small dry brush. And all we're going to do is we're going to get some of the paint on the brush, just a little tiny bit. We're going to get most of it off. We're going to, as Duncan would say, we're going to work the paint in amongst the bristles and we're going to get most of it off on the tissue. So there's really not much left on the dry brush at all. And then what we're going to do is very carefully, because we don't really want to go over the skin if we can avoid it, very carefully, we're going to start dry brushing this armour. And what will happen is, the Necron, on the back, you might see it better. The Necron compound, if I do it on this bit here, the Necron compound should slowly build up and give the effect of the colour being faded, not just painted on with a brush like I did, but actually faded away down to the metal. So it's not just chipped away, it's worn away and it's faded into just metal colours. So it may take a bit of work. And what will happen in the end is you'll almost not see the blue at all. So you could almost ask the question, and begs the question, what was the point of doing all that then? I know it's there. That's the thing, I know it's there. But this will give you some soft fades between the metallic colour and the blue. If I can get a good example there. I hope this is in focus for you. 
this just means you'll get a nice soft fade between the metal areas and the blue areas. Okay, so you can see now the kind of effect I was going for. It just looks like there's paint on there that's not just chipped away, but faded away. So we can assume maybe, you know, he's stripped an old Chrysler or Corvega of its of its metal parts that was maybe a light blue colour, and he's forged it into pieces of armour. And now over the years that armour's paint's chipped away and faded. But it's going to look even more realistic, because this is just the basic colours. So the next step is to start doing some dirtying up. And for that, we're going to use Nuln Oil. I don't know why I've got my hand in a stupid position. Nuln Oil. And this is going to be, first of all, or initially, we're going to do it just on the armour pieces, on the brown belt and leather pieces, so the cap and the belt and the pouches. Uh, and that's it. So, all we're going to do, get the Nuln Oil, and we're going to put it on. There's no real complicated process with this. We're just going to put it on there. We're going to try and spread it out a bit so it doesn't pool up. We don't want it to pool everywhere. We don't want it to make it like to have big dark black areas. So we're just going to work it around and move it around as necessary accessory on all the armor parts and the goggles and the leather bits. Okay, so the armor's come out nice and grubby and darker it's got a bit more depth to it uh, it was basically one coat i did do a little bit of a second coat just under some parts like under here under this armor uh, on some of the pauldron areas uh, and down at the bottom here just to give it a bit more variation i also put some null oil on the metallic parts only of the weapons not the wood bits i tried to avoid those uh, but just the metallic parts again just to give them some definition so that's come out i also went ahead and painted the ropes because i realized i'd forgotten those uh, and for that i just used uh, Karak stone. Just painted it straight on, nothing complex. So what's next? Next is the shade. We need to get grubby now. So all we're going to do is we're going to add some uh, Agrax earth shade. I'm going to give it a good shake. Shake, 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 shake. And we're going to be quite generous with this because this is going to be all over. The reason we did the null oil first is because I just wanted null oil on certain parts. So I may as well do that bit first and then go in with the with the Agrax Earth Shade over everything. And I hope this is in focus, because I set up my focus, and then I moved, oh well. So let me just move this shade out of the way, because it's in knockover territory. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna be quite generous and just apply it over everything. Now I don't want it to pool up and get dark in all over the place, so I'm gonna make sure when I brush it on, I move it around just to make sure it's not pooling up anywhere. And like the null nile, the point of a shade is to give definition to some of the recessed areas. So it just makes everything look a bit more three dimensional. So I'll go over and cover the whole thing. Okay, so as you can see, that's grubbied everything up quite nicely giving it a brown tinge and it just helps blend everything together a little bit make all the all the colors come together and make sense now it does make everything look very similar it's all kind of similar brown green shades so we need to do some more work first of off first of off first of off yes just make up words fox first off we need to do something with the skin because now it's a bit too dark for our and super mutant so what we're going to do straight off is go in with some more death world forest the same base color we used originally and we are going to go over uh, the raised parts now not the bits where the shade is gathered like the recesses but just the raised parts and what we're going to do is thin down the paint a little more than normal and we're just going to quite simply paint over those areas that are raised like the prominent muscles Okay, so that started to add a little more definition to the muscles. Just a little bit. You've still got the darker shades in the recesses, but the original Death World Forest colour is standing out a bit more. Uh, now, the next step is to do the same again, but this time we're going to go in with some... N no, we're not going to use Nurgling Green. We're going to use Death Guard Green uh, for the next shade. Again, we're going to water it down a bit more than normal. Uh, and we're going to simply do exactly what we've just done again however we're not going to go quite as close to the darker areas we're going to try and restrict it a bit more 
and that just make it more on the prominent areas of the muscles. Okay, so as you can see, that started to add even more definition to the muscles, lightening it up nicely and giving some three dimensionality to them. So the last step is to go in with the last green color, and as I showed you before, it's Nurgling Green. It is the Nurgling Green this time. And it's exactly the same again. We're just gonna go in and go over all the areas we've done, but again, we're gonna focus less on the whole area of muscle and just more on the tops and the most prominent parts. So for example, where the top of the muscle is here. We're just gonna work our way around. Now it looks scrappy when you put this on, but as it dries, it fades a little bit and it blends in more than you'd think. So it doesn't look like it blends first of all, but it does eventually. Okay, so the skin is now looking much lighter, much more mutant-like. There's just one last thing left to do, and that is to give it uh, a slight yellow tinge. If you play Fallout 3, you'll know they have a slight yellow tinge to them. Not so much in Fallout 4, but I quite like it, so I'm gonna go for it. Uh, so let's do this. So what we need for this is two things. We need uh, some Lamian Medium, da -da, and we need some Lamenta's Yellow Glaze. And what we're going to do, what a glaze is, a glaze is basically a very thin paint and it's designed to just tint the surface of whatever you're painting it on rather than act like a wash. But we don't want it, it's quite a strong bold colour, so we don't want it that bold. So what we're going to do, we're going to get our sen, I'm going to get me sen, some brushfuls of Lamian Medium, one, two, three, four. The mum's downstairs watching Coronation Street, so I'm going all northern. Uh, it's all 1980s. It's all the early stuff. Percy Sugden and that lot. And we're going to get one brushful of Lamentus Yellow. We're going to mix that together. Now notice how I did the Lamian Medium first, because I don't want to contaminate the Lamian Medium pot with the Lamentus Yellow, because that would kind of suck. And this is really simple. The, the reason I'm using uh, the Lamian Medium and not water is because water uh, breaks apart the acrylic binders in the paint so it makes it act differently it goes patchy or it doesn't quite stay solid if you know what i mean the color if you use lamia medium it actually retains the properties of the paint so it still acts like lamia like a like a paint rather than a wash and all we're going to do is we're going to quite simply go over the areas we've painted skin color with this thin mixture of the glaze Quite simple, dead easy, not complicated at all. Okay, so that's now dried and you can see it's just given that really nice sort of yellow tinge to the green skin. It's still green, it's not made it yellow and that's why I thinned it down with the Lamin Medium. If I just used it neat, it would have just kind of gone yellow. But you can see now how the skin is standing out from the armor and the rags. It's starting to look a bit more distinct which is what we were lacking before. It was all just browny green. So that's been done. Uh, next, we're going to do some more work on Tharma. I'm still Northern, Mum's still watching Coronation Street. No, Vera, no. Uh, anyway, yes. So we're gonna do something on the armor. And for this, we're going to use a shade called Seraphim Sepia. This is a sepia tone. I'm just gonna make sure it's still actually usable because it's been on the palette for a few minutes. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna apply this neat and we're going to use this to suggest more rust and corrosion. If you look at the pipe weapons, they are quite corroded and rust coloured. So we're going to do this all over the weapons. And it's just going to give it a kind of more reddy brown tinge. And we're also going to put it on the armour. Because the armour, remember, needs to be rusty as well. So we're going to make sure we put it on there as well. Being careful not to get it on other parts, just on the metal armour plates. Okay, and with that done, you can see now it's looking a bit more, a bit more corroded. I put two coats of the gla of the glaze, two coats of the shade, on the weapons just to make them even darker, so they look pretty good. Uh, next, we need to work on the leather, so the the little pouches, the belt, and the flight helmet. Uh, and for this, we're going to use exactly the same technique that we used on the skin. So we're going to go in first of all with the dryad bark, like we did the original colour, but slightly more thin than normal. Uh, and we're just going to build up some of the raised surfaces. I 
Okay, so you can see there, it's not made a massive difference because it is quite a dark colour anyway, but it's certainly visible to the naked eye. You've got a little bit more brightness in some of the raised areas. Uh, next, we're going to do the same again. We're going to use this time Gawthor Brown. Uh, and exactly the same, I'm going to thin it a bit more than normal and we're going to go in and work on some of the raised surfaces. Now, we'll probably do more than one application of this, so we'll just start off slowly on the raised areas. This is a bit of a lighter brown colour. So we'll slowly work our way around. And I say it may take a couple of coats of this, just because, like I said before, when you put these on, they look a bit stark at first, but then they fade after a few moments and blend in. Okay, and that's the leather done. Looking a bit more spick and span, well, not spick and span, but a bit more leathery, a little less dark. I also went ahead and I painted in the teeth in the mouth. And what I did here, I couldn't show it because it's too small for me to film, but I basically got a very, very fine brush and just touched some Screaming Skull, Screaming Skull, uh, to the teeth. And then when I'd done that and it dried after a few minutes, I just touched some Agrax Earth Shade into the mouth just to fill the recesses and sort of tint them and make them a book a bit more yellow. Because you don't want, I didn't want to use white and Screaming Skull's like a kind of bone, sort of warm bone colour. So I wanted that with a bit of the Agrax Earth Shade just to make it look a bit more, well, a bit less, less like they've been looked after. So that's the head pretty much done, apart from one or two little bits, but that's the face done. Uh, what's next? Next we need to do something with the rags. Uh, and for this we're going to do a little bit of dry brushing. I've taken an old brush and I've just snipped it down to a flat or reasonably flat surface and we're going to take some Dawnstone which is a dry paint. It's a light grey colour uh, and like the other dry paints it's mostly pigment so I'm just getting some on the brush and then we'll get most of that off on the tissue. Just as Duncan would say again, work it amongst the bristles. There we go. Now we're not going to be do any layering or careful stuff here because the, the rags are supposed to be rough anyway. So dry brushing is great because it will give that rough texture. And what we want to do is just try and catch the very tops and the very edges just to get some paint on there. Just to make these look a little more, well, a bit more like we've made an effort. And not just put, knock in the camera, there we go. Not just put some uh, some wash over some paint. So I'll go around and get this bit done. It might take a while because it's a very small brush, but I want to be careful. I don't want to be too careless and get paint all over the bits we've already painted because that would suck. Okay, and that's been done. Looks a bit more lively in the rags department. Uh, only a few last things to do now. Next, we're going to go back in with the Necron compound. You remember we used this before on the armor. So I'm going to dry brush this. So again, I'm going to get some on my brush. Bleh, 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 bleh. It's like jelly in there, it's weird. Get some on my brush and get most of that off on the tissue. Tissue, tissue, tissue. And like we did before, this is just for the armour and this is just to now, rather than do the whole thing, this is really just to pick out some edges, but maybe add some fading as well. So we're very, very carefully going to go around and add this to all the armour parts like on the chest armour here. Now the beauty of this is, because it's a brush that I've cut down, it's kind of spiky, which means not only will it pick up the edges, it might do the odd scrape across the surface here and there as well, which is perfect. It just makes things look a little more battered. Now the aim here is not really to get rid of that wonderful brown rust that we got from the sepia uh, shade, but really just to pick out the edges and make it look more like metal because right now it just looks brown so we want to kind of pick up the edges there I don't know if it'll come out on camera at all but it's just picking up the edges and the raised areas and it's just giving it that hint of metal so we'll go around and do all these okay and that's all the metal work brightened up it doesn't need to be super shiny it's just enough to make it look like metal work rather than anything else so there we go. So there's just one last thing to do now. Well, two last things. Uh, we need to do the skulls. He's got skulls adorned all over him. And for this, we're going to use four colours. We're going to start with the base of Xandri Dust. Then we're going to go in with some Seraphim Sepia as a shade. Then we'll lay around with some Ushabti Bone. I love that Ushabti Bone. Ushabti Bone. And then we'll finish with some Screaming Skull. 
So let me get all those paints to one side. So let's start. So we're going to start with the Zandri dust. Okay, so let's get cracking. So first we're going to do a layer of the Zandri dust and this is just to act as a base coat for the colours that are to come. Okay, so that's the skulls painted. Two things I have to tell you. One, it's a nice day outside for the first time this year and I've actually got the window open and I can hear the birdies tweeting. It's brilliant. Blackbird right outside my window, yes. Uh, the other thing is, yeah, be very careful when you're using shade bottles. They have a propensity to fall over, as I just found out dumping the majority of the contents of my um, Seraphim sepia all over my desk. Yeah, that's brilliant. Anyway, what's the next step? So they've been painted with the Zandri dust. Next step is to give them a shade. So we're going to give a shade with uh, the Seraphim sepia. So I'm just going to get some of that on the brush. I'm going to use it neat. I'm just going to brush this liberally over the skulls. You don't want it to pool, but it doesn't matter if it goes on quite thick uh, because you want to have a good shading effect here. Remember, these are skulls, so they're going to look scrabby anyway. But you definitely want it to collect in the eye sockets and in recesses. OK, so you can see there it's darkened those skulls down quite nicely. So time to go in now with the next colour. And the next colour is Ushab T-Bone. Shabtibo. Now we're going to use a slightly bigger brush for this because this is thinned down a little bit and what we want to do here is like we did with the muscles really just bring back, if I can move my palette out of the way just bring back the colour but without actually just painting it on as neat paint because we want it to be slightly patchy so we're going to go in and just do just the raised areas trying to stay away from the recesses if we can Okay, that's dried, you can see now. Looks pretty bony. Now what I did was, when I put this on, I forgot to mention, I did actually thin it a little bit more, like I said, we did with the muscles and everything else. I thinned it a bit more than normal with water, just so that it would be kind of a, a glaze kind of mixed with the wash. So that it would be a bit patchy on the first coat, but it would sort of stick to the edges, it wouldn't go into all the recesses. And then I could do a couple of coats just to brighten up certain areas, like the tops of the skulls. So that's what we did. The last one, is we're going to use Screaming Skull and this one we're not thinning a lot we just add a tiny bit of water to it because this is really just for picking out edges now we just want to highlight the real sort of talking points of the skull so for example the brows and the nose things like that. just the real the sticky out bits and this is quite tricky to do on camera I have to tell you so it's just the real sharp edges that we're going to try and catch here And as he hoves into view on the spinny thing, that can mean only one thing. Job done. Figure is complete. There was one last little thing I did, which I didn't actually remember to film. And that was just making his goggles black and shiny. And all I did there was dead simple. Got some Null Oil gloss. It's just a gloss version of Null Oil. Loaded the brush up and just with the point of the brush, just touched it into the centre of each lens. The, the Null Oil flowed off the brush into the recess that makes the lens and stopped at the edge. So if ever you need to fill a recess with a shade or a thinned paint, do that. Don't brush it in, just touch it in and it flows and the, the, the sort of surface tension stops it going over the edge. So now they look black and shiny. So that's this figure done. I haven't done the base. I'll be doing bases in a separate video. Just a quick how to make a base look interesting. It's not particularly hard, but we can use some different techniques we've not used here. But that will do us for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, as I said before, this game is due out in May. It releases in May this year. The first wave of figures and things are out. Um, so do pop along to medifius.com or medifius.net, whichever takes your fancy, and go and have a look uh, if you're into your tabletop games. And even if you're not, go and have a look anyway, because the figures are exquisite. Uh, and like I've said before, it's not just these figures I've got here. There's loads of mutants, there's survivors, there's uh, robots, there's wasteland creatures, there's scenery and set pieces, knackered cars, all, you know, Nuka-Cola machines, tables and desks, things like that. 
but there's loads of stuff to have a look at. So even if you're not you know, up for playing the game, they're still beautiful models. They're absolutely divine. So I hope this has been helpful. Uh, I've learned a lot in this because this is one of the... I've not really done that many figures, and this is one of the first few figures I've actually fully done. I've done a few Space Marines here and there, but not many. Uh, and I think I did all right on the flesh. I do need to work on my technique a bit, get the blends and shades a little bit more subtle. But I'm pretty pleased with how it came out, especially considering it's like my second or third figure or something like that. So I'm pretty pleased with that. But what a beautiful model. What an absolutely beautiful model. Uh, stay tuned for the next one. I'm not sure who we're doing next, whether we're doing Dogmeat or Nora. I don't know. I'll figure out. Uh, but in the meantime, do pop along to medivius.net or .com. Check it out. And don't forget, of course, the rules and documentation are all downloadable now for free. So you can get them and read upon the game in advance of actually playing it. But it just remains for me to say thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned for the next one. Go make something awesome. Go be awesome. And until next time, adios amoebas.